How's it guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is James and this is that med guy. Today we will be tackling the ROSC algorithm. This is super important because quite often we are pretty good at the whole resus part but the moment we get the ROSC part we can be quite thrown off. So if you look at the algorithm as you can see here you're going to start off with making sure you have ROSC. So good things that are going to tell you this is obviously your ETCO2. If it goes from a 20 to a 50 or you know like a a 30 to like an 80 millimeters of mercury or whatever the case is then you're going to have that's a really good indicator of ROSC. The other things you're going to see is you're going to see a return of spontaneous circulation, you're going to see the pulse, uh, you might even see breathing, you might even see movement. So these are really good signs. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to ensure good oxygenation ventilation because this is going to really help get rid of all of that carbon dioxide but also oxygenate all the cells that have now been hypoxic for so long. You're going to ensure that your um, saturation is above 94%. I've also made a video on saturation and ETCO2. I'll link them up here. And so you wanted to ensure ventilation oxygenation and then you wanted to avoid hyperventilation. The reason we're avoiding hyperventilation is because when we hyperventilate, we drop blood pressures, we cause the vessels in the brain to constrict and we just cause damage and so these patients should be put on ventilators if they are intubated or have some sort of advanced airway in and their ventilation should be controlled and at the right rate. As I have discussed in my video on ETCO2, if a patient has high ETCO2 it's not a sign that we need to be ventilating faster, it's just a sign that they're blowing off a lot of CO2 unless it's climbing, different story. And then once we have ventilation and oxygenation sorted we're going to move on to perfusion. So we're wanting to maximize your perfusion. So you can give one to two liters of ringer's lactate or saline, whatever you're giving. And you're wanting to make sure that the um, container is full. Obviously, if they have heart problems or they have edema or they have heart failure, you're not going to give them two liters of fluid. Once the volume or the container is full, you can then squeeze. Uh, adrenaline would be probably number one for now. You're going to give 0.1 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So the way I do this is I drop two amps of adrenaline in a 20 mil and I drop 18 mils of saline and that I can run at six to 12 mils per hour. And that kind of gives me the dose just so I can have it running. There's also a quick way to get a push dose presser out of that is if you draw out one mil of that and you add nine mils of saline, you then have a push dose presser. Also have a video on that, check it out, very interesting. So that you can kind of just give in the interim while you're setting up your infusions. So then the next thing you're going to do is so you have given fluids and you have now maximized their blood pressures and their perfusion. You want to have a blood pressure of above 90 or a good radial pulse. Once you have that, then you're going to assess their level of consciousness. Are they obeying commands? Because if they're not obeying commands, there's obviously brain damage, there's brain edema. And so then we're going to work with targeted temperature management. This used to be called therapeutic hypothermia. They have taken that wording out and they've now have targeted temperature management because they have learned that they used to cool the patients very cold um, and that would be quite risky. That was human resource um, intensive um, and patients could go into different rhythms because they were so cold and fragile at that point. So they did research to compare very cold to just a little bit cold and they had the same outcomes except the very cold was just much harder to maintain. So now they're saying just avoid active warming and just let them stay just a little cold and that that has significant benefit. Just make sure with the um, department or the hospital you're taking the patient to that they do targeted temperature management. Don't go giving them freezing cold rings lactate and actually they don't have any system in place to manage this. The next question you're going to ask yourself is, is there a STEMI or is there some sort of um, myocardial infarction that's happening? So you're going to do a 12 lead. Some places may not be happy with only a 12 lead after ROSC, um, they would want to have a 12 lead before cardiac arrest. That's obviously really difficult sometimes um, because if a patient goes into cardiac arrest, they come out and then you do a 12 lead, they're likely to show SD changes where that may or may not be due to a STEMI. And then the final super important bit is that we must maintain or we must continue to look for H's and T's because a patient can go back into cardiac arrest if we haven't fixed or permanently fixed the H or the T that was causing the problem. For instance, you'll see someone go in and out, in and out of cardiac arrest due to hypoxia or hypervolemia or an MI. These sort of things are going to make them to go back, forth, back, forth. Um, and so they can be very hard to keep out of cardiac arrest, which is obviously what we want to do. And so we must continue to search for more causes of cardiac arrest. You know, maybe they were hypoxic um, and now they have a very low potassium or what's, most, what's more likely to happen is that they will be very acidotic 
and that's going to be causing problems long term and so you're going to have to be working on the acidosis. I have a video on um, blood gas and how to read the acidosis and the alkalosis and pHs and stuff so that's I'll link up here as well and um, yeah guys I hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit like and subscribe and if you want to get notified of my future videos just hit that bell button that's what that's for and we shall see you in the next video bye for now